Don't watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own road show. Is it Friday already? Everybody and welcome to another episode of Friday Night Sucks. Now, we went ahead and skipped last week just because I felt like skipping last week. I wanted to do a nice little Friday double team, Friday Night Double Team. And it turns out that Guar was blocked in all of Canada. That's right. Everyone up in the Great White North was unable to watch our show last week. And this just tears my ass. I don't understand why Guar would be blocked in the origin place of the great Dave Brocky. Now, I don't know what the hell these people are thinking. I don't know how these things work. Sometimes shit's only blocked in England. Sometimes it's not blocked in England. Sometimes it's only blocked in Canada. Sometimes it's not blocked in Canada. Sometimes we're the only ones, Canada and America, uh, we're the only ones that get blocks, but what are you gonna do? So, I am back with another regular episode that I know is gonna clear, full of all episodes that I know is gonna clear, with 3 South, Liquid Television, In Living Color, and A Kids in the Hall. So, sit right here, hang out with me. You know we're gonna have a good movie closer tonight. Hang out, make sure you get yourself a liquidy liquid beverage of your choice, and I shall see you after the show. You think when the astronauts landed on the moon, they had to fight off giant dinosaurs? Giant ones? Yeah. What makes you think there were ever dinosaurs on the moon? Duh. How else would they have gotten to Earth? Um, Sanford? Dell? Joe? Oh, God. What now? The corridor meeting is about to begin. Did Todd say so? That's me. I'm Todd. Doesn't ring a bell. Your resident advisor. Uh, I helped you move in. Uh, you asked me if my hair was cotton candy? Oh yeah, is it? Again, no. Well, why not? Anyway, the meeting is starting at, uh, five minutes ago. Oh god, what kind of example am I setting? Who was that guy? I don't know. Ask that guy. Welcome to our first corridor meeting. I'd like to go over some ground rules. College! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Ools. I've posted them again because somebody burnt down the copy that was on the bulletin board. I added a new one that says no list burning. College! If you need to find me, just check this board. If I'm at class, the happy face will be in the space marked at class. You're gonna need to know this. Okay. If I'm in my room, the happy face will be here. Where are you now? I'm in the corridor, but please hold your questions until... Oh, which box is that? There's no box for that. So for all we know, you're not even here right now. No, I'm here. Oh boy, I'm way off script at this point. This is not the proper evacuation procedure! Hey, if I were you, I'd put down that beer. If you were me, you'd be drunk. Then why should I listen to a drunk? I listened to a drunk for 15 years. Then his heart exploded. His cold, black heart. Uh, it's my third grade ballet recital all over again. 
And then the meeting ended with some fat kid stepping on my groin. Is that why you talk like that? Like what? Never mind. Listen, man, the guys on your floor aren't going to respect you if they think you're a geek. You gotta be cool. You mean cooler? Yes. Much, much cooler. If you're busy, I could come back. No, Whitey was just leaving. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I have to counsel a resident. But there aren't any girls on your floor. One's gonna be in about five minutes. They say the clothes make the man, so I need to find a cool t-shirt. Uh, Olympic beer drinking team. Eh, too competitive. Make seven? What does that mean? Up yours. <laughs> Touche shirt. I walked right into that one. Here's the one for me. If this doesn't make me cool, then I don't know what will. Oh, using a hot plate to make soup in the dorm. Don't worry guys, I'm cool. I won't call the fire marshal. Uh, I don't know what stings more. The rejection of my residence or the biscuit my eye. It's the bisque. Are you really the ultimate party machine? No, not really. Then isn't that like false advertising or something? Well, I did have a party once, but when I blew out the candles on my cowboy cake, my hair caught fire. Sweet. You should have another party like that. You know, where you set your hair on fire. But my hair is my best feature. Okay, fine. I just thought it would be cool, that's all. Wait, you think it'll be cool? Then I will have a party. I gotta go address the invitations. I knew studying calligraphy wasn't a waste of time. I only wish my father had lived to see this day so I could rub his nose in it. I wish I had money for one of these. My body is craving one. It's like in the wild when a bear craves a monkey, but there aren't any around because it's molting season. What are you talking about? I'm talking about being hungry, Joe. Something you wouldn't know anything about, rich boy. I'm paying my own way through school, and I got a scholarship. My parents couldn't afford a fancy scholarship. I'm having a party in my room. Here's your invitation. I am so sick of you people thinking college is one big party. But I thought parties were cool. Oh, I can't win. They are cool. This is too much of an emotional roller coaster. My lung can't take it. Nothing says cool college party like finger sandwiches. Party! I don't know if that's safe. Boy, I was right on that one. Look at these tiny sandwiches. I feel like a giant. Oh my god. Heimlich Maneuver! Heimlich Maneuver! Rosie! Oh, I'll put it out with this bug spray. Oh my god! Outstanding party! But my poster! Really? You think the party's outstanding? Are you calling me a liar? I'll kill you, you Trisket! Wow! I finally lived up to my shirt! Yeah, Todd! You're the man! Todd, 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 Todd. Hey, everybody. Todd, Check Todd. out my six-pack. Beer? My daddy calls it beet and juice. Here, catch. It's against the rules to bring alcohol into the dorm. Oh, that don't sound like the ultimate party machine. Have one. But I've never had a beer in my life. He's not as cool as we thought. This is not outstanding. I mean, um... I never had a beer I didn't like. I guess one beer could hurt. Three days without an accident. Mm, that's a new record for barter. My God! I can't believe a drunk just fell out of a window. The college is turning into Hyannisport. 
This student's RA is going to get the chair! Uh, I'm the RA. You see, this is what happens when you have to hire based on quotas. Damn albino pressure groups. Until you're clean and sober, you are hereby relieved of duty! That's part of being more local, and Channel 3 is part of some great millennium events. Starting this fall, the Ameritech Power of Ideas 2000 series kicks off with Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and the future shines with the GE Lighting Downtown Cleveland Winterfest, beginning the day after Thanksgiving. And the stage is set for First Energy's Cleveland 2000 Millennium Celebration, live on New Year's Eve. It's the end of the century and the start of a new age. Join us. Jim Donovan, to the bar, Channel 3 down, News. The toy store favored by families for generations cool. has inspired KBKids.com with thousands of toys, from hard-to-find learning toys to the hot toys kids just gotta have. Look at that. Cool. KBKids.com. We get toys as well as any grown-ups can. Cool. KBKids.com. We get toys. Order online now and you get free shipping until October 15th. Later on an all new Tonight Show. Who's your daddy? For the first time anywhere, the father of these baby chimps will be revealed. Somebody did a bad vasectomy or this guy is really good. <laughs> Plus Nicolas Cage, Natalie Merchant and Burglars Beware. Security devices that work? Sort of. Then on Conan, SNL's Will Ferrell and Judd Nelson. All new Tonight. Big, 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 big time. Big, big, big. Right now, our spicy Cajun McChicken is just 88 cents after 4 p.m. Only McDonald's could bring you this big taste treat for only 88 cents. Hit the big time, the big taste, M -G -O -M -A -L -D -S. Did somebody say McDonald's? Try the Cajun McChicken, now just 88 cents after 4 p.m. Oh crap. Will help? Anyone? Todd? Are you in there? Todd? Where the hell is he? Why don't you just holler for him? Please! Hey, Toddy, Toddy, Toddy! Get on down! Get on down! Hey, Toddy, Toddy! See If he don't come a running after that, he ain't around. Or the coyotes got him. As much as I enjoy your backwater capering, I need some toilet paper. It might be wet, but it's a darn sight better than a dried out corn cob. <laughs> Next, we have a new member of the group. His name is Todd Wolf Schmidtman Sternowitz. No wonder he drinks. I thought we were supposed to remain anonymous. Damn it, I always do that. Oh, okay, okay. The meetings are anonymous starting now. Mm. Todd, please stand and tell us about yourself. My name is Todd and I'm not an alcoholic. Oh. 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 Son, the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem. Natalie just told us all what a drunken slut she was. And now I feel good about how bad I feel about myself. But I've never had a drink in my life. Not even a Shirley Temple. But that's mainly because I don't care for her work. I find her tap technique clumsy. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Except your cowardice about facing your problem. And your freakish appearance. You won't get your job back if you don't admit you have a problem, Mr. Wolfschmidt. Damn it, sorry. All right, if it'll make you happy, I admit it. I'm an alcoholic, okay? I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> there, that wasn't so hard. Now can I be an RA again? No, Todd. You have to complete 12 steps of soul-searing hell before you can get that monkey off your back. That's not a monkey. It's scoliosis. Someone needs a hug. Please be careful of the hub. Ow! I just stepped on some broken glass. 
Where'd that come from? The bottles you idiots were throwing against the wall. What are you talking about? Those bottles didn't have broken glass in them. Besides, someone usually vacuums that stuff up. That someone is me. But I can't sign out the vacuum cleaner because that stupid RA hasn't been answering his door. He signed on to do a job. Doesn't he know the meaning of the word responsibility? Don't be mad, Adam. I don't know the meaning of that word either. I think it's some kind of fish. Don't bother looking for the RA. He gone. What? I ain't seen anyone in his room for three weeks. Maybe it's haunted. I smell a mystery to solve. Well, I give up. You mean this room's vacant? As in, available? I don't know, but somebody told me it's haunted. Okay, step four. Make a complete personal inventory of how I've hurt others. I was rude to Milo during last week's fire drill. Oh, how could something so bad look so nice? Oh, I'll tell you how. Calligraphy. Oh, darn it. Now I have to start over. Let's all congratulate Todd, who has successfully completed this program. And, to celebrate... Damn it, I always do that. Okay, okay, no more drinking, starting now. So, can I get my RA job back? Right after next week's graduation ceremony, Mr. Wolf Schmidt Man Sternowitz. No less names? Damn it! I'm sorry, I need a drink. This isn't going very well. Meeting's over. She has the voice of an angel. Could you keep it down? I'm straddling yesterday's hangover and today's buzz. Oh, I do believe I have a touch of the vapors. So, um, my name's Todd. Are you in rehab too? Nah, I just put away the chairs at the end of the meeting for beer money. You're in my way. Oh, sorry. Here, let me do that for you. Suit yourself. Hey, where'd you go? She left already. Uh, how will I ever know how to find her again? She'll be here every week. But you won't. After you graduate, I don't want you hanging around being a bad influence on the others. Lousy drunk. I called you all here because our corridor is falling apart. And that's why I think we need to elect a new RA. Yeah, that's oh, right. I'm on board no with question. that. Definitely. Uh -huh. Joe! Someone who can keep the floor clean, council residents, and be their friend. Joe! Will you shut the hell up? <clears throat> I think that describes me. Therefore, I'd like to nominate myself. You'd make an outstanding RA. Thank you, Saladin. Don't patronize me, Trisket. So, if there are no other nominations, I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> I'll nominate Sanford! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sanford! 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 Outstanding. Sanford, I love Sanford, that, Trisky. Sanford! 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 It is a great day when one of us graduates and moves on from our group. Particularly when that person is as annoying as Todd. Todd, what are you... Is that my hat? You reek of liquor. I drank several wine coolers. Several. Although I did mix it with some grape soda to take a little of the edge off. What did I tell you, Natalie? Freak boy fell off the wagon. <laughs> you owe me a 12-pack.
aerodynamic design, breathtaking acceleration, air-cooled, turbocharged engine, standard built-in DVD player, and of course, uh, tinted windows. <laughs> Introducing the IMAX Special Edition. Heated leather seats sold separately. Hey, feast your eyes on this. The big New Yorker pizza from Pizza Hut. Now, this is what pizza's supposed to be. Look at this thing. 16 inches of real street corner pizza dripping with cheese. Look at all this cheese. Over a pound of cheese on this masterpiece. You know what a pound of cheese costs at the market? And we dropped the price a buck. Now it's just $8.99. $8.99. What part of big, good, and incredible deal don't you understand? Hurry, this price ain't gonna last. So if you want to feed a lot of big mouths without taking a big hit in the wallet, try the big New Yorker from Pizza Hut. Try it already. Now let's close with our prayer. Dear God, why are we such losers? Amen. Okay, out you go. Hey, Matt. Huh, you remembered my name had a T in it. I'm gonna put those chairs away twice as fast now. Come here. There's something I wanna do first. Closer. Uh, relationships are about sharing. Hey, Joe. You should check out my new room. It's huge. Want to see it? No. Oh, okay. So what can I do for you? Do you need some advice about your love life? Oh, please. I don't need anything from you. Can I have the vacuum cleaner? Well, you gotta sign it out. Fine. Okay. You got a pen? And paper? And a vacuum cleaner? What happened to the vacuum? What didn't happen to it? Todd may have been an ineffectual boob, but at least he cleaned up. He fluffed people's towels, he changed the light bulbs, and he threw away the glue traps when they had mice on them. There are glue traps here? I gotta check that out. Oh, you have the most beautiful hair. Don't let me get puking it. I have a day tonight. Ew. That's disgusting. If I were R.A., I would have had this place cleaned up and organized by now. That's the difference between you and me. I know. Hey, don't blame me. I voted for you. Didn't you hear me? I was chanting your name. Joe! <laughs> it looks like there's a leak out there. Someone should report that to someone. Hey, Cindy. I'm almost done doing your job. Can I drive you home tonight? That'd be great. Pick me up outside Andy's pub at 2. If I'm not there, check the dumpster. Or the Indian casino. You have such a wonderful sense of humor. Which further proves to me that this is the right thing to do. Ow! And that was the plastic knee. The one that was supposed to last a hundred years. Anywho, will you marry me? I could never marry you. You're an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. All right. You're really ugly. That I can accept. Sorry, Todd. Do you remember my name? This parting is bittersweet. My physical pain is surpassed only by my emotional pain. No, oh, I was wrong about that, too. Ouch, 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 ouch. ouch. Uh-oh, the fire's going out. Hey, those are my medical books. But if we don't keep the fire going, the dogs will come back. This has gone on long enough. I'm taking over this floor. You're out. You hear me? Yeah, you're outstanding. But seriously, you did a really bad job, you stupid Trisket. No problem. It was too much work for me anyway. Stop arguing. It's done. Now we just need to find a new RA. And because there is clearly no more qualified candidate than myself... Hey, you! Take your damn hands off of that mob! It's Todd! Todd's back! You can't come back now. I'm the RA. I finally got my single room. Being an RA is my lady, 
and no one steals my lady without a fight. Wait, that's the ladle you use to scoop crap out of the urinal. That's right, Hotshot. Fine, the room and the ladle are yours. Oh, shut up, all of you. Aren't you gonna clean this place up? Yeah, it smells like a cesspool. No, it smells like home. I'll never leave you again. Woo hey, piggy, 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 hey, get out down there, piggy! Some of the kids from the neighborhood carried my mother's groceries all the way home. You know why? It was out of respect. Back, back. No near man, the original nutter. Take in a take check. You can't put your lung the shire fags. And when we come is murderation. All original gangsta man. Here when we tell them no, yeah, you may come and imitate. Originate because we originate. Alright, mate. Now what are you doing, mate? Here when we tell them come in about gears, I'm gonna stop that. Watch me tell you, oh boy. Watch this! Nanini wo Big in a jungle Women tell everybody Watch it now man Me at the nutter Original man My man My man Nutter Original man
yours, mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. It lives in color. And how would you feel knowing everybody was your friend? From thin to thicker, through thick and thin, and egotistical trips was put to an end. It lives in color. Well, I'm Keenan Ivan Waynes, and this is In Living Color. You know, uh, couple, I just want to ask you guys something. Um, Mike Tyson invited me to come, like, check out his fight. Y'all think it's a setup? <laughs> I think I'd tell the world, so if anything happens, you guys know what's up, okay? <laughs> You're watching my back. Before we get started, say hello to my DJ SW1. My fly girl starting over here with Carrie, Deidre, Carrie Ann, yeah. Michelle, and Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> All right, give us a few seconds. We'll be back. Sit tight. Hit it. Are you bored? Nothing to do? Is your family quality time like family nap time? Well, wake up! It's time for fun with the Michael Jackson Potato Head Kit. That's right. Capture the many faces of Michael Jackson with the Michael Jackson Potato Head Kit. 400 molded plastic facial features allow kids to reconstruct Michael's ever-changing face after every single one of his plastic surgery operations. I made my Michael Jackson potato head look like he looked when he was with the Jackson 5 with a strong Afro-American nose and a big fro. I made my Michael potato head into the Michael of April 1986, right before his third nose job, but after his extensive cheekbone reconstruction and the cleft added to his chin. Now, keeping the April 1986 face as it is, replace the hair with hairpiece number 139-D, and look who you've just made. It's Michael Jackson's own idol, Diana Ross. Now... Just add mole number 5-D, and you've made Michael's fabulous sister, Janet. Take away the nose completely, and you've just made LaToya. Look, everybody, I made Michael look just like he looked on the front of his bad album. That's great, son. But you know, something's just not quite right. I know. That's right. With just an ordinary kitchen vegetable peeler, you can simulate Michael's chemical face peel and dermabrasion scrubs. The only limits are your family's imagination. There is no end to the Maxio Facillary fun. The Michael Jackson Potato Head Kit from Dimco. Mashed potato liposuction accessories sold separately. Oh, breakfast is so boring. Not for long. Ooh, I love you, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> so it's true, isn't it? You guys really are moving? Yeah. Well, that's just great. Well, listen, they have to sell the house first. So? Well, selling a house takes time. We'll at least have the whole summer together. You think? <laughs> Goodbye. I'll miss you. Nobody knows homes better than Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Fox 29 and Coca-Cola invite you to plunge into the fun at the all-new Universal Studios Islands of Adventure theme park. Battle the forces of good and evil at Marvel Superhero Island. Encounter a moving, breathing dinosaur at Jurassic Park and more. To win, send your name, address, and phone number to Fox 29 at this address. Fifteen lucky winners get passes to the park, plus one grand prize winner gets a VIP weekend. Excite your thirst and thrill your senses with a great taste of Coca-Cola at the all-new Universal Studios Islands of Adventure, only from Fox 29. He's a lover. He's a fighter. He's Keenan and Damon's brother. 
You've seen him spin records on In Living Color. Uh, now see him fight crime in his screen debut. Uh, the Wayans Company, in association with Tiger Beat uh, Magazine, is proud to present SW1 in Disc Jockey, Death Jockey. Coming soon to a theater near you. We'll be there. <laughs> the ambiguity that I feel never justifies itself. There's always the pungent odor of life's constipation that surreptitiously conflicts with the detrimental instability hitherto for six, eight, who do we appreciate? The unification of Congress, excuse me, condoms, demystifying the squalor of profanity regurgitating over and over again. Here, let me digress my bowels for a minute and right to the front, the nondescript hernia rectifies the miscommunication of fetal or fecal, depending on where your head is at. Reading is fundamental. So let's write. Do not be persecuted by the pompous fedora balanced by the equilibrium fortified by the government's inability to eradicate or foreshadow taken from the Hebrew word for skin. Understand what you read. He doesn't. <laughs> Paid for by the President's Council on Literacy. Now, Edna Louise, I want you to sit down and I want you to write an apology letter to Mr. Ferguson. Pulling off the principal's hairpiece was not very nice. Yeah, but it sure was funny. What did you say? I said, sure, honey. Don't be a smarty pants. And as for you, Parnell, there'll be no talking from you. You're in enough trouble as it is. <laughs> you, Parnell, you're in enough trouble as it is. Hey, it's your fault I'm in here, Edna. How did you figure that? You're, you're the one who gave Mrs. Keegan my tucker bar in the first place. You should have told me it was a laxative. <laughs> Pucus Maximus. You snooze, you lose. Blow it out your hiney horn. Go on. Dear Mr. Ferguson, I am so sorry that you are bald headed and trying to hide it with that ugly wig that doesn't fool anybody. And I, I am also very sorry that you are fat and ugly and there's nobody likes you, not even your wife, because your breath smells like roadkill. Uh, I hope you will accept my apology and the Louise. Here, I think you'll like it. Hey, we're not supposed to be talking, Barfasaurus. I do not wish to be trapped in your web of intrigue. Dance with the dead. Dance with the dead. Dance with the dead. That Dance skeleton the dead. is an example of biological petrification and is to be used for scientific purposes only. Oh, yeah? Well, I think it looks like your mom. Does not. Does you. Hey, Mrs. Parnell, you look like you lost some weight. You and that butthead seem to have the same bone structure. Would you like to dance over here? That's what you did. Uh-oh. Hey, Parnell! Way to go! Parnell! 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 I'm not Parnell. Like this. Yes, you are. I am not. Are so. I am not. Are so. I am not. Stop. You better, better stop. stop. I hate hey, you. What? I swear to... Mrs. Tiggins! Hey, now, that's my impression of you! I can't do that! Mrs. Tiggins! Shut up! Your teeth don't look like that! It's a frog. You don't even know what kind. Oh, die. You too? It's a dead frog. It's a South American speckled weeper. Thank you very much, oh, miss. Parnell, you are so smart. I can't believe it. Yeah? No, know what, Parnell? I heard that. I heard that if you, um, if you hold your hand up to your face and, and your hand is bigger, that means you're super intelligent. So that must mean I'm really a genius. I'm not. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
Quietly, Parnell is having problems. Yes. He's you know something to else, Mr. Keegan? I think I better stay home from school tomorrow because I've been through a terrible Snot. trauma. Snot. Snot. Behold, my newest discovery. I believe that's already been invented. <laughs> <laughs> but I've discovered a way to get all long-distance calls for only 99 cents. Impossible. <laughs> it's true. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20 and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. And if you talk longer? It's just 9 cents a minute after that. What about fees or contracts? Mm. They don't exist. It's flawless. It's your best work yet. I know. Discover 10, 10, 2, 20. Davis and the Broncos gear up to defend their Super Bowl title against Aikman and the Boys. It's a Fox NFL special Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Fox Sunday is back with three spectacular season premieres. Will Peggy survive the smashing new king of the hill? And Peggy, we're too late. Then it's a star-studded Simpsons. Mel Gibson. You see that? She's my property, and I own it. And the biggest Futurama ever made. I christened this ship Didenic. <laughs> it's Fox season premiere Sunday, September 26 at 7.30, 6.30 Central. Welcome to Uncle Joe's Fairy Tales and Barbecue Recipes. Once upon a time, in a land not so far away, there lived a gal named Rapunzel. She was pretty. I mean, she was fine. But her daddy didn't want any of the young men to mess with her. <laughs> you know what I mean. So he built this tall castle so that nobody could get to her. <laughs> Rapunzel! Rapunzel! There is no maiden fairer than thee. On first I fell in love with thee, poor my fair maiden and let me prove thyself to thou if only I was a bird and could fly up to thee but that my heart could soar on wings of love for thee fair maiden Rapunzel I ain't understood a word you said Rapunzel don't live here no more she got evicted now my name is Betwinda Malika Hightower Jr. and I'm on the cusp of Virgo. So why don't you just come on up here and bust that rescue move? <laughs> well, look at baby. Uh, throw down those curly locks and I'll climb on up and we'll get busy. <laughs> everybody I'm Hubert no I'm I'm Fred am I Ron O'Neill Don Cornelius Don Cornelius and my guests today come all the way from Ethiopia England England Ethiopia England but before we get to that let's get to this a group the name of the group fine one carnival Fine young cannibals. That's right, fine young cannibals. But before we get to that, let's get to a groove that's sure enough gonna make you wanna boogie while you woogie, boogie. On the dance floor. On the dance floor, my main man, Fat G. That's heavy D. And the boys. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
something but cheek, she's so nice. And right now, I'd like you to meet two members of my family. Old trained dancers. Yes, two of the old trained dancers. And you are a young man. Methuselah. And you? Jane Pittman. As you both know, you have 20 seconds to correctly unscramble the name of a very famous talking horse. And I'll give you a hint. It's not Lionel Richie. And while they do that, we'll do this. Yes, and you are? Yes, and you? Oh, yes, yes. You all must be very, very proud of your success. Well, we first started out. Will you come back and do another song for us? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fine One Mammal. Yes, that's all the time we have for Boogie in today. And I'm Don Corleone. And as usual, it's always in parting that we wish you love, peace, and... Chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Get your hands on the new chalupa. With a shell so crispy, flaky, chewy, tasty, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Just 99 cents, only at Taco Bell. Better get some backup. Roger. <laughs> Blockbuster and go home happy. Sit back and watch. You are invited to a new kind of night on the town. Get in the car. Katie Holmes and Scott Wolf. Woo! Go rated R. Rented this week at Blockbuster. Now you can buy movies and games at the lowest prices of the year during the summer sale. Choose from hundreds of titles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Roger Spitman for the Wild World of Sports. And welcome to the final round of the 10th Annual Sweethearts Bodybuilding Competition here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the greased up pose portion of the show. The action has been pretty fierce here. And here comes our first competitor. She's Sarah Sunkiss from Salamander, California. <laughs> This is her first finals. Not a lot of muscle mass and still quite feminine. And quite frankly, I don't like that, and neither do the judges. She's gonna have a tough time here today. 
Next is Carla Meals. She's five foot seven, 140 pounds from Beaverton, Wisconsin. Pretty good definition. But she's having trouble getting rid of those darn breasts. And that's gonna come against her. I mean, look at them. They just won't go away. And finally, the competitor everyone's been waiting to see. You can feel the anticipation. Oh boy. Oh boy. She's the only woman on the circuit who goes to the bathroom standing up. Oh, yeah. She is working it tonight. She is in top. Oh, oh, but there, there she goes. Showing her feminine side with the perfect obstetric push. It's her ode to the mystery of motherhood. Oh, baby. She is hard as a rock. like that can there be any doubt no. ladies and gentlemen the judges have come to a decision and the winner is miss vera de milo <laughs> congratulations on a great victory for you princess now the reports are that you have used steroids uh do you care to comment on that little lady no. yes i would roger <laughs> I don't know who's starting those rumors, but I do know that there are a lot of jealous people out there who aren't willing to do the work it takes to look like this. Let's face it, women see me, they want to be me. Well said. Well said. Could you just tell me one more thing then, Vera? Sure. I gotta ask you this. Uh, what is that bulge in front of your trousers? Well, now, a girl's gotta have her little secrets. <laughs> That's where I keep my chewing tobacco. And I can see that you still have that wonderfully feminine sense of humor. Oh, this is my boyfriend and trainer, Bart. And what a lucky man. Oh, baby. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, oh.
Wake up. Wake up. Whoa. Whoa. Why are you doing this to me? Do you realize what time it is? Don't you remember? Today is the day we plan to go to the country. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Okay, I'm ready for our adventure. Let's go. Here we are. Isn't it great? Look, a baby waka. These are a delicacy in some parts of the world. Ow! What a wretched little thing. Hey, look, what's that? It's a pop you ball. Let's catch it and ride it like a horse. Oh! I think we're stuck up here. How will we get down? I don't know. I'm afraid. Hey, knock it off. Maybe you could help us. Do you think you could fly to the city and get help? I think he's going to help us. I miss the dirt and noise of the city. Why did we ever come here? Oh, look, we're being saved. That bird creature saved us. Oh! I never want to come to the country again. Every place is equally horrible. You can be miserable anywhere. You gotta be kidding me. Hey man, where are we going anyway? Don't worry, you'll see. We'll, you'll see, just hang on. Hey, is this Frank's planet, man? What? No, this is not Frank's planet. This Frank lives on a desert planet. God, oh. don't you remember? No, man, I've only been there at night. Oh. Are we gonna meet Frank here or what? What? No, no. This has nothing to do with Frank, okay? Just drive. Whoa. This looks like Frank's planet, man. It looks a lot like Frank's planet. You gotta be kidding me. Frank has two trees on the entire planet. This has nothing to do with Frank. You just drive, stupid. God, you're stupid. Hey, man, this looks awful spooky. This is... Are we gonna meet Frank in here or what? No, we're not gonna meet Frank in here, okay? Get your hand off my leg. Jeez. Oh, sorry about that. Right, now, don't touch any of those controls, because you don't know what they do. I do, too. Whoa! Oh, great. She's, She's gonna blow! blow. Watch for the signs of comedy. Children at play. You threw a banana peel at a monkey? <laughs> well, he started it! Six days a week on Seinfeld. Watch Monday at 7.30 on Fox 29. They've come demanding fajitas. Tender strips of beef or chicken in Chili's legendary marinade. Grilled to perfection and served sizzling. Only at Chili's. It began as the product of meticulous Japanese design, but it was sent to Europe for finishing school. It was tested on Austria's Alpine roads, refined on Germany's autobahns, and chased on England's racetracks. Now the car that's proven itself in Europe is crossing the pond. Introducing the all-new Infiniti G20. Born in Japan, educated in Europe, now available in America. What began as a game has become a nightmare. What the hell did she do to me? Something's wrong. Kevin Bacon. Stir of Echoes. Rated R. September 10th. Uh, look at that. So beautiful. Bellissimo. Be gentle. Hold it like this. Do not rush. Enjoy every moment. Ah, the onion. Such a beautiful thing. Philips High Definition TV. As real as it gets. Today, a teenager in Madrid and a teenager in Atlanta discovered an international language. Boys. Today, Don Reed found a mutual fund that will put his kids through college. Some new roommates in Boston found their first piece of furniture. Tony Ramos made his latest dance mix available to techno fans worldwide. And Charles Beckman got in touch with his high school sweetheart 60 years after their first kiss. And they all found it on Snap.com.
What's going on here? Long arm of the law. Last time we saw Dog Boy and Rondi boiling over with unbridled passion at the drive-in. But Dog Boy's passion for chasing cats turned an evening lit up with lascivious longing into a sudden nightmare of unfulfilled desires. And now a reckless Dog Boy turns his attention to an alluring pile of unburied bones. He's at it again, Ellen. What is that animal doing down there? I will send you Looks like he's digging a hole. Handcrafted vial filled with my tape. Now he's putting something in the hole. You know, it looks like a bone. The horrors of the world it is a bone. In. Now he's burying them. It brings tears. To Helen, do you know what this means? Those are bones he's Helen, buried. Man. He's a murderer. Shh, quiet, dear. Oh, Jerry's dear. saying something very important. You're Jerry's going to sit there dear. listening to that. While right next door, we have got a cold-blooded killer who's burying the grisly remains of his last innocent victim. Oh, oh, just imagine what he did to her. What are you doing? Call 911. We've got to put an end to this. We've got to call the police. You don't die, Jerry. Don't die. I I'll send you all the money I've got. Just please don't die. Give me the phone. No. I've got to call the cops. No, no. I have to save Jerry. Don't, He's dying. Don't, Jerry. Don't, 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 don't. Is this the individual you called us about? Yes, sir, officer. He's the one. He's a cold-blooded killer. A murderer. Sir, could you please step away from the hole and put your hands behind your head? What's going on here? Just put your hands behind your head, please. No, sir. Sure. That's not right. Crazy. Sir, Sorry, sir. This is routine Ooh. procedure. I just have to check to see if you don't have any weapons. All right. You're clean. Now. It seems this gentleman has called in a complaint against you. And I'm here to try to get to the bottom of it. But I have done anything. No, that's what they all say. I'll handle this if you don't mind. Oh, by the way, if you haven't met, this is Mr. Murdoch, your next door neighbor. And he's been telling us how you've been cutting up women's bodies and burying their bones out here in your backyard. Any truth to that story? That's crazy. I've never hurt anybody. I'm just burying old ham bones like I always do. Well, I've been on the force for over 20 years, and I think I can tell the difference between a human bone and a ham bone. You see? You see? He did do it. He killed them all. Oh, tortured them and, and performed unspeakable sexual acts on them, uh, uh, and then killed them. Uh, look around you. It's, it's a graveyard back here. This is a ham bone. Oh, hello. And you know what? In future, you better think twice before accusing every Tom, Dick, and Harry of being a mass murderer. Got it? Yes, but he's crazy. That'll be enough, Mr. Murdoch. Now, I've got a good suggestion. Why don't you both just go home and we'll call it a night? You know, I really should apologize to Cindy. I'll throw it again one more time. You know, no, she's no, a really neat really, girl. I'm late already. Maybe she'll give me another chance. I like that. That's the second time today. Boy, she sure is a clumsy bitch. Yeah. Took me a long time to make up that order. What does she think we run here? Hmm? A diner or a waitress training school? <laughs> That's it. I've had it. You tricked me on purpose. Ah, you're dreaming. I wouldn't waste my time tripping a stupid bimbo like you. Bimbo? Who are you calling a bimbo, you ugly your clumsy ass out of here. You're fired. You can't fire me. I quit. I wouldn't work another minute with you freaks if you paid me a billion dollars. Is that what you are? Freaks. Especially you. Good rinse of bad rubbish. Does Dog Boy really have a prayer in hell of ever meeting up with Rondi for yet another disastrous date? Find out next time. See Dr. Shrinkman's clinic and her strange and stupefying psychological tests. We're going to show you a series of pictures. Hear Dog Boy's ridiculous responses. Chase! Barry! Feel Dr. Shrinkman's repulsion when Dog Boy gets over enthusiastic. Don't you ever try anything like that again. Be there. It isn't possible!
Do you know what this means? And that looks like Frank's ship. What? No, that is not Frank's ship, Mr. Stupid Idiot Albert Schweitzer. That's nothing to do with Frank. Oh. Can you guys let me out of here? Oh, God, he, he came around. I want my shower curtain back. We're not giving him the shower curtain back. Hey, what do you think of that, man? I don't know. That's a pretty big if. All right, now, don't slow down when we go through here. Hey, man, it says danger. I'm not going there. I know there. it does, but just don't slow down and you'll be all right, okay? Hey, man. I'm like blind or something. Not, hey, I'm blind. I can't you're see not a thing. Blind. You're not blind. It's just dark. Wait for the lights to come up. Oh, there, there we go. See? Hey, I'm stopping, man. I'm scared. You're not stopping. Take your hand off my leg, okay? Oh, don't, sorry about don't that. Don't stop. Don't stop. Hey, man, what's that? What's that? What's that? Whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh man, look at that. Oh, man. That thing went right through us. No kidding. I smell like bacon now. I got free voicemail, free caller ID, no annual contract. Yeah, if it wasn't for Primeco, I couldn't even afford wireless. You guys, ready to get back at it? All right, who messed up my pretty work? I don't know, but he's barefoot now. Select one of our new rate plans with long distance already included and talk as long as you want, as often as you want. Go ahead and call, it's Primeco. <laughs> It's not the size of your howitzer, it's what you do with it. Introducing Tiny Tank, the tiny tank with the big attitude. Paul! Oh. As a highlight of our franchisee meeting, we have the co-founder of Pizza Hut, Mr. Frank Carney. Recently, the retired co-founder of Pizza Hut did something surprising. He bought a Papa John's franchise. Sorry, guys. I found a better pizza. Today, he owns over 70 restaurants. Papa John. Better ingredients, better pizza. He's got it. Try our Papa's Choice. That's a large pizza with your choice of up to five toppings for just $10.99. Chances are, cause I wear a silly grin the moment you come into view. Chances are you think that I'm in love with you. Fall in love with the Gordita Supreme. The warm, pillowy flatbread, the cool, sour cream. It's everything you've been looking for. Now open late. It's the comedy premiere of the year, The Adventure. You, bring me the Wall Street Journal. You too, fight to the death. The drama. Here we have the loud. <clears throat> sweet Mary, mother of God, jackpot. The romance. Oh, you sweet old broad, I love you. <laughs> the Family Guy season premiere, Thursday, September 23rd on Fox. Dick, the High Commander. I'm gorgeous! Sally, his sexy sister. But I'm so hot, I killed him! Harry, the bumbling brother. <laughs> and Tommy. Hey there, sport! Starting September 13th, six times a week. Third Rock from the Sun. Weeknights at 6 and Saturdays at 6.30 on Fox 29. Can you join me, Lieutenant? No, thank you, Baron. I've just come from the stables. My horse is gone. Your horse is gone? I believe it was stolen, Baron. Oh, dare you take that tone with me. I don't mean to be abrupt, but I will have answers. Well? Now, why did you remove the portrait of the Baroness from the wall? Well, I sent it away for renovation. The, the dampness of these walls puts a mold on the pigment. Can you also explain the violin music and the girl in the chapel last night? You saw her again. So you admit there's a girl? Ilsa. Ilsa, is that her name? Answer me, Baron. Please, please, leave me in peace. If I leave you now, Baron, I will come back with a company of my men and I will tear this place down around your ears until I find her. Is that clear? Very clear. That's what they all say.
Searching for the lost poodle of a wealthy millionaire, the specialists have stumbled upon the secret base of a race of alien hounds. The price for their information is total annihilation. Launch will occur in 30 seconds. What are we gonna do? That won't help. There's no time to get far enough away from the blast. I don't know about you guys, but I've had it up to here with this super death trap crap. You have a plan. Damn straight I do. Hey, muscles. Grab those potato sacks and shove them up the back way. Catch my drift? Gotcha, baby. What? Are you thinking of Mendel's experiments with potatoes? Those dealt with heredity. They can't help us. 21. Didn't you ever stick a potato in the tailpipe of a car? 18, 17, 16, What would that accomplish? 15, 14, 12, Absolutely 10, nothing! 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3... Scotty, what is it? Five, She's going to blow! Five, you blew up is uh, city property. So now you terrorists are gonna pay. It isn't possible. This can't be happening. Well, it is possible. And it is happening. In our next episode, a funny thing happened on the way to the mall. <laughs> hey, look, that's Frank's diner. Let's go there. No, it's not the same Frank. There's a lot of Franks in the universe, you know. Jeez, you're really brilliant sometimes. Hey, this looks kind of familiar, man. No, you never been Is here. it? No, you never oh, been Oh, man, here. it is. It's the bank. I can't believe it. You brought me all the way here to go to well, the I bank. Well, I gotta do so. I gotta run some errands. Okay, now, don't look at my number. I'm looking at your number, man. Yes, you are. I hope I got some money in my account. Oh, that's a pretty big if. <laughs>
Jack. We hope you've been enjoying our MTV Animation Power Hour this Sunday night. Coming up next, the second part of our 1-2 animation punch at Speed Racer. He's 18, he's legal, he's made in Japan, and he's next. Okay, straight now. People look alive. This is a race against time. Okay, people, listen up. Let's get our lights up. Where are my bubbles? Bubbles. And we're live in three, two, one. serious try now you make the scene all day but tomorrow they'll be held to pay people listen attentively I mean about future calamity I used to think the idea was obsolete until I heard the old man stamp in his feet Eternally, fire is applied to the body. Teeth are extruded and burnt to ground and baked into cakes which are passed around.
Hi, Tony. Felix, hi, how are you? Pretty good, how are you doing? Pretty good, you know, same old grind. Yeah, you ready for the movie? Yeah, I just go to the diner in 15 minutes, so let's go see that movie. Okay, let's go. Oh, excuse me for a sec. Uh, can I help you, sir? What? Oh, God, I'm sorry, this is Apollo. Yeah. Oh, this is Apollo. Yeah, he's, he's with us. He's come to the movie with us, okay? Great, that's great, sure. Okay, <laughs> Apollo, I want you to meet my buddy, Tony. Hi. Hi, Apollo, pleased to meet you. <laughs> what do I look like, a businessman? <laughs> Save that for businessman, okay? I'm not a businessman. <laughs> <It's a> joke. <laughs> Funny guy, huh? Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Okay, you guys, what do you want to go see? Got the listings right here. I'm easy. Yeah? Oh, I'm easy. You know me, I'll see anything labeled movie. You know? Okay. <laughs> hey, movie. how about we go see High Stakes? Oh, I would love to see High Stakes. Yes, I've heard, I've heard nothing but great things about it. I heard yeah. it's like the best action movie since Die Hard. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Definitely High Stakes. Let's yes, go. Yes. Let's go see High Stakes. Excuse me. <laughs> Who told you it was a good movie? <laughs> People? <laughs> Sorry, what people? Do you mind if I ask? People come to the diner after the movie to have a milkshake and a burger, and they talk about the movie articulately sometimes. Yeah, intelligent people come here to the diner, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah. Well, apparently not. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. It's a piece of oh, crap. Oh, you've seen it. Yeah, sorry, that's what I was trying to say. I was just taking the long way around. Oh, well, yeah. that'd be dumb then. I mean, he's seen it, you know? So, what's... look, do you guys want to see a movie? Yeah, well, we want to see it. It doesn't sound a... like you want to see a movie. You don't sound too movie enthusiastic. To me, Tony, you know? what is with you? You are Mr. Movie. Well, I don't see a movie every night in my life. I can go home and read a book. I can be Mr. Book, I guess. <laughs> Jeez. <gasps> I got it. Woody Allen. Oh, I like Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. It's a Woody Allen film well, festival I like Woody in town. Allen. You know, I'll see any Woody you Allen. You love Woody Allen. Allen. I love Woody Allen. It's really up to hey, you guys. How do we go see Woody, Woody Allen. Allen? You like Woody Allen? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I like Woody Allen. Oh. I uh, love Woody Allen. Oh. Yeah, I think a lot of important film critics. Though they don't come here to the diner. <laughs> yeah. Would probably agree with me that he's the number one comedy genius. Of genius? The yeah, genius. Oh. Of the past 20 years, yeah, I love Woody Allen. Yeah, so? I totally agree. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, Woody Allen it is then. Yeah, let's go see the genius. <laughs> okay, it doesn't start uh, for about half an hour, I'm starved. You got something to eat around here? I guess I got some cheese sandwiches left over from the day. Oh, yourself. great. I love the these. Sandwich. Oh, wow. Paul, here, have one of these babies. I love your cheese sandwiches. What is it you do again? Oh, well, you know, you know I do a few things. I, yeah. I butter both sides of the bread. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, I pre-grilled the cheese. Oh. I find that brings out the essence of the whole cheese flavor. Sort of yeah. helps the entire cheese affair. <laughs> no, thanks. I mean, no thanks to the cheese sandwich. I'd just rather not eat a cheese sandwich right now, if that's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw it on the floor. I missed. That'll happen to a guy. You know what I mean? I don't think a court in the world will convict me, do no. you? No. No, good. Well, oof, that's a way to... I'm sorry. I know it's your specialty and everything. You must be having a great time up there buttering both sides of the bread. Really, you know. I mean, I'm sure you're going to go far with that thing. Ride that rocket, baby. <laughs> what are you doing with your eyes here? What is that? That's bugging me. Do you mind? All right, who is he? I want to know who is he. Apollo! Oh, no, I know who he is. I want to know who does he think he is. Huh? Who do you think you are? All right, listen, buddy. No! Who do you think you are? You're obviously someone very important to come into my establishment and treat me like I was the scum you scrape off the tomato soup. That wasn't the... Look, oh, no, 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 no! You're obviously from a very rich, important family. Maybe your uncle invented something great, like the toaster? You little piece of crap! I know who you are. I know who you are. You're just another bully. Like the guy in the streetcar today who took me away from the window seat because I went the window seat. You little piece of jerk! Let me tell you something. Look at me! Look at me! Let me tell you something! I am going to college and I am studying journalism! And when I graduate in a few years, I'll be working for the best paper in this city and you'll still be coming to places like this! Picking up people like me, you little piece of crap, jerk, crap! Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Well, I don't think your 
your friend likes me oh, very much, man. No, he didn't mean nothing. Oh, he didn't mean nothing. Now, what the hell was that? Hey, you, he's, he's okay, eh, Tone? No, he's an asshole. <laughs> You're the asshole. You're the asshole. No, you're the asshole. You're the asshole. You're the asshole. asshole. I blame you. What? Yeah. Me? What? Okay, what the hell was that all about? He's a total creep. Yeah? He's a total creep. No, no, like you rode him. him the moment he came in here. Are you That's blind? right. No, I'm not are blind. What are you staring at? Nothing. You're looking at my birthmark, aren't you? Just for a second. Forget the movie. I mean, oh, come on. Come screw on. Woody Allen. What? What? You never understood interiors! I don't know. Was it me? Together we've celebrated birthdays and opening days. Good efforts and little losses. Moments that live once and forever. But what we've really celebrated is time together. Now McDonald salutes the year-long Walt Disney World Millennium Celebration, where new memories are yet to come. Commemorate this momentous event at McDonald's with four special edition glasses. Where can you start celebrating the millennium? Did somebody say McDonald's? Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. First, the cold minty shell chills you down. Then, the Sub-Zero flavor puts your breath on ice for a long, long time. Dentine Ice cools your breath twice. Hi, I'm Bruce McCullough. I'd like to tell you about the Daves I know. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. These are the Daves I know, I know. These are the Daves I know. He works in my dad's store. He's worked here for 12 years. He'll probably work here for more. These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. Dave Gord, I've known since I was six. In graded, he broke his leg, so we got drunk and sick. These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. Some of them are Davids, but most of us are Daves. They all have their own hands, but they come from different mums. <laughs> These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know. These are the days I know. Dave Jadiski, man, this cat can swing. He weighs almost 50 pounds and he delivers my paper on time. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. Dave Capisano, I hardly know him. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. These are the days I know, I know, these are the days I know. We are the days he knows, he knows, we are the days he knows. We are the days he knows, he knows. Hi, my name's Dave Foley, and uh, something you might not know about me is that I have a good attitude towards menstruation. <laughs> That's right, I'm the guy. The guy with a good attitude towards menstruation. Oh, I know a lot of men are made uncomfortable by this monthly miracle, but not me. No. I embrace it. Embrace it the way some men embrace the weekend. Why, I anticipate it the way a child anticipates Christmas. Did you know that uh, in a lot of native Indian cultures, menstruating women were forced to leave the village lest their powerful magic should overwhelm that of the shaman? If I were shaman, I wouldn't be so competitive. <laughs> I'd be more open and giving. I'd be a shaman with a good attitude towards menstruation. Because after all, what is it? A cluster of blood vessels awaiting a fertilized egg. 
providing a safe, warm place for that egg to grow. And if a life does not occur, the whole thing is flushed away and the cycle begins again. Now, is that anything to be ashamed of or disgusted by? No. This is the nesting stuff of humanity. That's why the woman I shall love will be able to menstruate as fully and freely as she desires. Even if her monthly flow should build in intensity to a raging rust-colored torrent. An unbridled river of life-giving blood flowing from between her legs. An awesome cataract plunging off the edge of our couch. I wouldn't be phased. No, no, even if Cordobois were to come upstream battling the ready rappers and singing a jaunty song, I would take no offense. Rather, I would ford across that mighty womanly river and fetch herbal tea and pamperin. And then, I'd mop her brow and I would admire her fecundity. For I have a good attitude toward menstruation. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now that I'm sorry, let me in! If I'm out all night, I will freeze and die. Will you be happy when you see me frozen and dead? Yes! <laughs> okay, I see the humor in this now. So let me in! No! All right, that's all right. The house is in my name. I can do what I want. I can do what I want. No house rules! No house rules! From now on, the outside of the house is the inside, and the inside of the house is the outside! You can't do that! Yes, I can! The house is in my name! I can do whatever I want! You're outdoors, baby! <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll just retire to the living room, where it's far more comfortable. <laughs> All right, Harold. Let me in. No! Let me in, please, you bastard! Let me in! No! -ho. Let me in, Harold. I swear to God, I'll kill you! When I'm ready, baby! When I'm ready! other friends. Dad, there'll be other law firms in Boston. <laughs> uh. It's never easy when Timmy gets transferred. is Ed. He's sick of the Swiss. That's right. I'm sick of their good reputation. He's really sick of the Swiss. I'm sick of their cheese. I'm sick of their chocolate. And I'm especially sick of their plucky heroine, Heidi. He's sick of the Swiss. He don't like them. I mean, every other nation in the world has taken their turn being maligned and slandered. But not the Swiss. Icky, yucky, stinky, stupid Switzerland. Well, that situation is over as of now. Move over, America! There's a new asshole on the map. Man. I've had it up to here with your skiing heroes. I've had it up to here with your mountains. I've had it up to here with your secret bank accounts. From now on, Switzerland, your name is Mud. If you roast them all in a fondue pot, 
Sure bet that they'll complain a lot. Whiny, whiny Switzerland. Ah. It's war between the Swiss and me. But they've never done anything wrong, you say. Ha ha! What about the clock? The clock. Huh? If they hadn't invented the clock, I'd still be in bed, dreaming. It's time. It's time. Oh, it's time to hate the Swiss. <laughs> Zurich heads, cuckoo cuckoos, landlock losers, Zurich heads. neutral ninnies, mm. boring bankers, yep. chalet pimps. <laughs> oh, yeah, his name is Ed. Yeah. He'd like to see the Swiss dead. He's sick of the Swiss. <laughs> Got a problem with that, Belgium? <laughs> oh, Lord, where's the doctor? He said he'd get here as soon as all creatures great and small was over. Uh. Well, you better stay put, Frank. I can't stay in bed, Martha. I gotta get out and plant the sheep. If we don't get ourselves a good crop of wool this year, we're gonna lose the farm. Don't worry, Frank Jr. will plant the sheep. Frank Jr.? He's just a little girl. I know, but it's about time she became a man. Uh. You just stay in rest. No, uh, You stay in doctor's rest. Doctor's coming, Ma. Ma the... The doctor's coming, Frank. Go. You... you stay here. Uh... I'll be back with the doctor. The doctor's coming up the way, Ma. He's coming. Oh, he stopped. He's just looking down. He's just staring at a pretty rock, Ma. Oh, he picked it up, and he threw it. He hit a crow with the rock, Ma. The doctor hit a crow with the rock, and he's coming again, Ma. He's coming again, Ma. I can see him. He's almost here, Ma. Doctor's almost here. Hi, doctor. <laughs> hey, Frank Jr., Miss McKay. Hi, doctor. Excuse me, Junior. Come right on in, doctor. Why, sure. Watch the door. Well, come right in. Frank's in the bedroom. I'd better wipe the mud off of my boots first. No, that's all right. Oh, oh no, no, in. no, no. See, it's such a lovely day. I've heard I come by the river route, and you know what a mess of rain we've been having lately. And so, needless to say, my boots have gathered more than their fair share of mud Please on the don't travel. Bother. Please don't yeah, bother. Yeah, they go right in. No, it's no bother. I don't want to get mud all over your lovely kitchen floor, Ms. McKay. Well, we're going to clean the floor later. I I'll wouldn't just... hear of it. I would not hear of just it. Just take the damn things off, then. I'm sorry, Doctor. Just that Frank is awfully sick. No, sick. no, no, Mrs. McKay. You're right. You're right. I'll just take him off. Well, let's just get down here and, uh, uh, um, well, what do you know? Got a little knot in my laces. Never mind, well, Doctor. Never mind. Well, it's no floor, dirty. Well, we get this a little bit. I love dirty floors. No, no, I love dirty floors. Please just come on. Just come Well, if you anyway, really Frank, don't we're mind. We're going to have fever on Tuesday. Wait. Why, is that pie I smell? No, it's the smell of my daddy dying. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure that's the smell of your ma's apple pie. Well, I did bake an apple pie for the Sunday meal, Doctor. Well, you sure do make the finest pie in the county, no doubt in that. Would you like a piece, Doctor? <laughs> well, I'd be a fool to turn down a slice of your pie, Ms. McKay. Well, quick little piece, then. Okay. Hey, Frank Jr. Hey, Doctor. How's school been treating you? Good, good, you know, school. Yeah, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, maybe a doctor like you or a corpse, uh, I mean a farmer like my daddy. You know, boy, your pa's a fine man. Here's your pie, Doctor. Why, that's lovely looking pie, Mrs. McKay. Mm-mm. Ha, ha, ha.
Would you like seconds, Dr. M? Why, I'd love another slice of pie. Force of habit. Get him another slice, Junior. I better check on Frank, Doctor. He's doing mighty poorly. Whatever. Frank Jr. You know, at one point I wanted to be a country western singer and not the doctor that I eventually become. Really? Oh, yeah. You're cheating, Hart. Doctor! Doctor! You better check on Frank. Death is banging on his door. Now, oh. Mrs. McKay, I really think I ought to be doing the doctoring around here, don't you? Yeah. All right. Now, once you learn a bar chord, the whole musical world is your oyster. You're cheating, Hart. Thanks for the coffee, boy. Well, let's have a look at this here dying man of yours, oh. Miss McKay. Hey, Frank. Hi there, Dr. Amity. Let's have a look at you, boy. Yeah. Uh... Well, I can't see anything wrong with this man. No reason why he shouldn't be out planting the sheep as we speak. Well, I guess I better be getting over to the Parker place. You know, Mrs. Parker's expecting mm -hmm. one of mine. <laughs> Why, is that chicken I smell? Well, there's one in the coop. I guess I could kill it and cook it for you. Well, if it ain't too much trouble. It ain't no trouble at all. <laughs> that pie's for dessert. Yeah, <laughs> Tattooed below his eye, his mother. 
Christ, she knows that he is strong enough to die. He's rolling in the kettle like it's been that summer, but down three shots right out of here. I'm dead. The new king is crowned. Black crow, white shoes, black head, Cadillac. Yeah, the point of time bomb. Black crow, white shoes, black head, Cadillac. Yeah, the point of time bomb. Is it Friday already? Well, that was our show for tonight. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Make sure that you go on ahead and smash that like button. This thumbs up come and find you. He hasn't fought in a while. I'm hoping that he's okay and he's gonna come back. I would hate for a Hamza retirement. I know a couple of other people out there would too, but I especially, I'm a big Hamza, Hamza, Hamza fan right here. Obviously, cause why else would I say Max Smesh? Aside from the fact that Smesh is a pretty cool way to say Smesh. As we move on, we got wise guys coming up. We got a nice little movie, Danny DeVito. I've never seen it before, but we're gonna see it together now. I've seen bits and pieces of it as I was going through editing, but hang out with us. Make sure you're hitting those likes and subscribes and all that bullshit. And make sure that you're going on over to the Discord. We got the links in the live chat and I, I think I got the link in the description. If not, I'll make sure I get it in there. Head on over to the Friday Night Sucks Discord channel. I'm thinking after hanging out with our homies over at Super Saturday morning for the fights last week that I might start trying to do some live, uh, what the hell you call it, the, the voice chat, voice chat. I'm thinking about doing some voice chat, so uh, make sure that you join the Discord. If we get enough people over there, then we can do some voice chat and it'll be a good time. But hang out, chill, wise guys coming up, and I shall see you next time on a Friday night. A sucks. Friday already? You Are you talking to me? Huh? Are you talking to me? 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 Are you talking to me?
Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Well, you must be, because I'm the only one here. What are you doing? I want to be just like you, Dad. Bite your tongue. You're going to be a lawyer, maybe even a judge. You should be putting guys like me in jail. Are you talking to me? Get out of Go on. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Mo. Happy birthday to me. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. feel like uh, today's a special day, don't you? No, not really. So you don't have anything special planned or anything like that? No, SOS, same old stuff. Hmm. Stand up. What? Take off that shirt. What's wrong with your shirt? Take off that shirt, it's filthy. It's a filthy shirt. Take off that Where filthy shirt. What's wrong with no it? son of mine is going out of this house in a shirt like that. Even though, given your chosen line of work, it might very well be riddled with bullets by the end of the day. You've been watching too many movies, Ma. Honey, I made your favorite. Hey, what's the matter? Uh, Wanda, I feel terrible about this weekend. Oh, don't, don't. I still had fun. Uh, what, what? Sitting on a runway at Newark Airport for 16 hours? Oh, yeah. Ooh. Harry, we should have known there was something wacko with that travel agent. A weekend in Jamaica? $69.95 per person, airfare, hotel, and Coco Locos included. Well, that would have been phenomenal if those jerks just got at the plane past the safety inspector. How do you think I feel being the only woman in the Newark Hadassah who lists her son's profession as hoodlum? I am not a hoodlum. I work for Mr. Anthony Costello, who's in the olive oil business. Oh, please, Morris. Our people did not come through the Inquisition, the pogroms, and the Holocaust so that you could end up working in Jersey for a guinea gangster. Eat the fish. Oh, that's real nice, Ma. Would you ever stop to think that maybe I'm a trailblazer, that maybe I'm opening up avenues here in Newark for other Jews, that maybe Mo Dickstein is the Jackie Robinson of organized crime in New Jersey? Dad, <laughs> can I get a 10-speed bike? We'll see. Jimmy Acovano's father got him one. His father can afford it. Frank the Fixer hurts people for a living. You mean he kills them, don't you? Boom, boom, boom. Three in the back of the head. That's it. We're moving to Sweden. Is you on your case again? What else is new? You know, when I got up this morning, I was feeling kind of special, like, I don't know, today was my day, huh? What's so special about today? Nothing. Forget it. What are you putting on your face? It's called total tan. It's supposed to simulate a tropical glow. How's it look? Like there's something wrong with your liver. Very funny. Here, put some on. Oh, no. Come on, everybody's oh. gonna expect us to have tan. Yeah, well, they wouldn't have if you hadn't shot off your mouth how we were supposed to be going to Jamaica for the weekend, big shot. Well, we were. Not on a condemned plane. Where'd you get that travel agent anyway? My cousin Artie always uses him. Harry, your cousin Artie's been in jail for five years. But that doesn't mean he didn't like to travel when he was out, Mo. Hey, just do me a favor. Don't talk me into any of your deals anymore. Mo, right? if I didn't talk you into anything, you'd never go anywhere. Yeah, well, even when you do talk me into things, I still don't go anywhere. I suppose this incredible package deal at the Barbados is out. You're such a fuck. How about you? Hey, guys. Oh, here comes the Crystal Street bookends. <laughs> Galapagos Islands. <laughs> it's locked. Hey, Harry, what happened to your face? What, this here? This happens to be a tropical tan. Oh? I thought it was hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really went to Puerto Rico, huh? Jamaica. We don't go to Puerto Rico no more. That's passe. Hey, Mo, you went too? You look a little pale. Yeah, well, I'm not the sun worshiper that Harry is. I saw a lot of 
indoor activity, if you know what I mean, eh? Oh, yeah? Doing what? Watching TV? <laughs> <laughs> Marco, here's your lasagna pants. Been at the house since last Christmas. Thanks a lot. What can I get you guys? Uh, give me an egg cream, Marco, will you? Yeah. How about you, cuz? What'll it be? A uh, Coco Loco? Don't <laughs> start. What Wanda called Aunt Mary? Give me a chocolate collar. Sure. Now wipe that shit off your face before Mr. Costello comes down. What, it looks that bad? Shh. Cost me six bucks. <laughs> Harry, did you know today's my birthday? No kidding. Happy birthday. Marco, let me have a cannoli while you're over there. You didn't get me anything, did you? Oh, oh, all right. Oh, the egg cream's on me. Happy birthday, all right? Ooh, that's nice and hot. Very good. Here comes another birthday present for you. Frankie to fix it. Oh, man, not him. Ooh, look at him. Ooh, he's oozing this way, that fat and miserable. Hey, Frank, how's it hanging? Give me a ball give me a beer. Frankie, Benedict, you're looking good, you know? Well, we were just saying, Frank, we don't see enough of you. You're exactly what I'm looking for, dickface. Oh, Frankie, the name's Dick Steen. Make yourself available this afternoon, dickhead. Frankie, for you, it's his pleasure. <laughs> just tell us what you want, and we'll jam it right up your fat pork chop ass, you miserable What are you telling bastard? him it's my pleasure for? I'll tell him it's my pleasure, Harry. You always do that to me. It upsets me just to be around like that. You think I'm in love with so the miserable So don't tell him it's Frankie! My... God, I love you. You look terrific, Frankie. I mean it. Hey, I heard you got your kid a new 10-speed bike. What a great dad you are. That's very important. Let it, dick face. Don't forget. 16. Moby. Make this quick. I want to go home and change. Sample. We're increasing Judge Overton and Chief Barker's monthly allowance. Make sure there's an extra thousand in each envelope that you deliver today. No problems, Costello. No shoes. What about that shipment of cigarettes from North Carolina? They're in the warehouse, Mr. Costello. Four truckloads. Excellent. Excellent. Georgie, uh, Louie, any trouble with the collections? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Costello, you forgot about me and Mo. <laughs> I never forget about you and Mo, Harry. I always have plenty for you to do. Here. This is your grocery list and your dry cleaning. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that I'm gonna trust these other gavones with that? <laughs> Happy to do it for you, Mr. Costello. Mo, you're about a 40 regular, right? Uh, well, yes, sir. Uh, try this on. A jacket? For me, Mr. Costello? Uh, go over this. Let me see how it looks in the light. Oh, sure. Uh, hey, Mr. Oh. Costello, a jacket? Thanks! Jacket actually is bulletproof. <laughs> Order me a dozen, uh, different colors. Thanks, Mo. All right. Start the car.
Even money is the ignition, two to one is the door. Who's on? Put me down for 2,500 on both. 5,000 for your two on the door. Get out the black suit, pal. Bitch. <laughs> Shut the fuck down, Five hundred on the ignition. In 15 seconds. job. Come on, Harry. There's a lot of worse things we could be doing. At least we got lifetime jobs. Unless we try to quit. Hey, we're in a growth industry. Did you know that organized crime is the fourth largest employer in the state of New Jersey? Interesting stats, Mo. If we make decent money, we don't have to hurt anybody. And if something happens to us, our families are taken care of. I mean, what more do you need? How about respectability? You think I like strolling around Newark in a charred coat? Having to buy groceries for some guy whose car just blew up on me? When I'm 50 years old, maybe I want somebody buying my groceries. Having my car blow up on him, all right? You think you feel bad? Today's my birthday and nobody remembered. Not you, not even my own mother. You feel bad, right? See you after lunch. Yeah. Where are you going? I'm gonna move for Jew food today. Ah! Crep lock down the hallway. Party! A oh, nice. Move it, dick face! That's 16! Morris, what's going on? Nothing, Molly. Frankie, have some cake. Oh my god, what is he doing? Look at it! What a way to cut a cake, Frank! Come That's buttercream icing! Give it to the shop! You know, boom, boom, boom! Three in the back of the head! <laughs> He's a kid, he's a guy. Go over there before you get us all killed. How come I wasn't invited to this party? It's just a little get-together, Frankie. You know, just the immediate family. Happy birthday, oh, baby. How you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's happening, Mo. Nice to see Ow. you, kid. Where you go? Can I come along for the ride? Why not? Two bodies, one brain. Get in the back, keep your mouth shut. I promise you. You said so much you. already. Don't touch the ground! Don't touch the windows, don't touch the upholstery, don't touch nothing. Nice lane change, Frank. You know, 
I was thinking of buying one of these caddies. They handle very nice, Frank. We going to the track, Frank? Yeah, that's right. Hey, look at all this money in here. Close the fucking back. Am I gonna have to place another bet for Mr. Costello? Hey, what is this, 20 fucking questions? Just that every time I place a bet for the guy, he loses. Why don't you place the bet? I'm a little too well known down there. You could disguise yourself. As what? The time life builder. <laughs> what the fuck's the matter with you? There's ten grand here. There's a horse called Longest Day. The number two horse running in the second race. Put the ten grand on the number two horse to win in the second race. Then that shouldn't be too complicated, even for you two fucking stunards. The second horse in the second race? What does that mean? That means Mr. Costello wants me to bet his ten grand on that horse. That's what that means, nothing else. No, that means the Costello don't know shit about horses. Today, it's a two horse in the second race. Last week, he had you bet on a gray horse because it was a gray day. Christmas time, he bet on Jingle Bells, remember? He don't know what he's betting on. The last four times you bet for Costello, he lost and lost big. Harry, you're making me nervous. Wait a minute. Stop. Here's a horse. My baby. I won money on this horse. In fact, you and me made a killing on this horse a year ago at Belmont with Marco. It's never at Belmont with you and Marco. This is a voice from God. He's from the grave, Valentini. I can't believe what you're thinking here. We got 10 grand in our hands. Destiny is calling. This is part of the grand design. Hey, now he's a designer. Right. Hey, Harry, design this. I'm betting on number two. Thank you. Look at that, Mom. Costello's horse ain't never gonna win. Not now, not never. It's a fucking glue pot. It's going off at 25 to 1. It ain't got a chance in hell. It's off the board. Don't you ever learn? There's no getting through to you when you're like this. I, I love you, Harry, but face it, you're a compulsive gambler. Wanna bet? That's not funny. You know whose money this is? This isn't just anybody's money, Harry. This is Tony Costello's money, the meanest, lowest mobster in Newark. Who has guys like me and you for breakfast? I can't even believe you're right. serious about the whole okay. thing. All right, forget the whole thing, all right? All right. Forget it, all right? Well, forget I said it. like this doesn't come along very often. Oh, you're absolutely right. A chance to get killed does not come along that often. Oh, we both know that Costello's been losing his ass down here. So what? So why should today be any different, huh? I'll put this $10,000 on my baby to win, going off at five to one. We'll walk out of here with $60,000. When the race is over, we're going to a song and a dance how sad we are that Costello lost his ass again, and we'll tell the blimp we tore up the tickets in disgust. I can't lie to the fixer, Harry. The guy's a killer. You're doing it. What? You're doing it again, Mo? What? Why do you always hold us back? Huh? Like in 68, we had a chance to go to Vegas with Bobby D'Elia. You talk me out of it. He runs that town now, goddammit. So why don't you go see him now? You can take one of those package deals. The plane leaves every hour. This is my point. No more package deals for us. With this $60,000, we're flying first class all the way. Mo, do you know they don't charge you for headsets in first class? On the house. It's true, Mo. Mo, what about our dream, huh? What about it, huh? The first Italo Judeo combination restaurant deli. Step up to the window, Mo. Take a look in there. Look! Oh, those big chunks of corned beef on the steam table, huh? Oh, cannolis stuffed with cream, rows of raviolis, meat. Cheese, spinach, oh, big, giant, golden brown canishes, huh? Toasty. Smell them, Mo, huh? Take a deep breath, huh? You smell it? The 
it's the guy in the next stall, Harry. I'm getting out of here. No, 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 just don't talk me into this. We you always talk to me into things that are no good for me, so don't talk me into this one because I know in my heart it's no good for me. Mo, you're wrong. This one is good for you for once in your life. Open up, go for it. I can't. Come on, there's 10 horses running in this race. Costello's horse is going off at 25 to one. It ain't got a chance. Let's put this $10,000 on my baby to win. Or do you want to die in Nork? I'd like to place a bet on my baby, a thousand dollars, ten times to win, please. When did you start smoking again? What are you doing, Harry? What's that for? Luck? He said we didn't need luck. He said it's in the bag. You always need luck. Oh, come on, I'll buy you a beer. Let me have a beer. Two beers, please. Don't worry about it. Relax, will you? You're all tense. <laughs> How you doing? I'm fine. Fine. This is to my buddy and my baby. <laughs> gonna be okay? Oh, oh, look at that beautiful son of a bitch. Look at broke out in front, Mo. Look at the stride on that baby. Oh, look at that beautiful thing. Go, go, go. Go, I don't believe it. Hey, I got $10,000 on this way. Hey, 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 I got $10,000 on my baby. I don't want to do it. We're going to take this money, and we're going to open up the first Italian Jewish delicatessen. And you're all invited to the grand opening. Homemade pasta. Homemade matzo ball soup. Boar's head, cold cuts. Lean corned beef, crunchy sour pickles. Mo, Mo, look at this. <laughs> Mo, 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 we did it. Longest day, the long shot has moved into fifth as they round the far turn. My baby still leads, going clear by eight. Paranormal is second. But longest day. Gonna be all right. Gonna be all right. I'll keep that lead. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Jiggy, Jiggy. All right, come on, come on, come on. Uh oh, uh oh, what? Uh oh, what's the matter, man? Why didn't I see it? Why didn't I see it? See what? Why didn't I see it? Why didn't I see it? Why didn't I see it? What are you talking about? Why didn't that fat pig? That fat pig, he did it! That bastard! Come on, my man! bastard! He did it! My life depends on it! My baby! No, Mo, we gotta get out of here! Mo! 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 Oh, my God. No! We're dead. We're dead. Mo, where are you going? To Mr. Costello so he could kill me, which is what I deserve. No. Oh, my God, we're dead. Yeah, well, put yourself together. We are no Come longer on. alive. Do you understand that? We are no longer here, Harry. You and that Italian Judeo deli bullshit. You did it to me again, Valentini. Me? Yo! Me? I did it to you? Why do you always listen to me, huh, Mo? Huh? That's what your problem is. You know I don't know what I'm doing, what yet you? you always listen to me. Why don't you protect me? Where's your mind? I'm just minding my own business. It's your fault. You know it's your fault. You always talk me into the whole thing. All right, your... all right, Mo, Mo, who gives a shit whose fault it is? We gotta get out of here. We gotta get past the fixer. No, no, we'll take a bus. Hey! Frankie! Where were you? We were looking all over for you. Where's the tickets? Where's the tickets? The, the, the tickets? The tickets? Mo, the tickets. You got the tickets. Come on, the tickets! Mo! Give come me on, the come tickets. on. The tickets, come on. Where's the tickets, Mo? Come on, give them to me. Come on. Give me the tickets. Come on. Hey, Frank, I don't know how you made this call. I can't believe you did that. I'd have never made that call. Exciting race, huh, Frank? Not really. Let's go. We're dead. Hey, Frank, Mo and I are going to stick around and play the ponies a little bit. We're feeling lucky. You, you know, know what I mean? Let's grab a cab home, Frank. No problem, huh? Don't you want to see the expression on Mr. Costello's face when he sees these tickets? Let's go.
I truly believe there may be another way out of this than the usual violent approach. <laughs> He's already talked to us, and he's turned you in. Uh, he wouldn't do that. He's my best friend. The friendship, Harry, goes out the window at these moments. I've seen it happen time and time again. What I want now is clarity. Whose idea was it to rip me off, to steal food from the mouths of my wife and children. Mine, it was my idea. It was, it was my exact words. I said, Mo, Mo, let's steal food from the mouths of Mr. Costello's wife and children. I'm telling you, it was all my idea. Please don't drown me, please. Harry spoke to us a little while ago, and he sold your ass down the river. He would never do that. Yeah. Harry's my best friend. Are you sure about that, Dick Face? Come on. Whose idea was it? Whose idea? Oh, 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 my idea. Oh, my oh, idea. Oh, I swear to God, it was all my idea. This I didn't expect. I figured Valentini would sell the Jew darts down the river. But this is interesting. They are protecting each other. Let me waste them, Mr. Costello. Do we really hurt them by killing them? It's a good start. But have we taught them anything? No. The real issue here is loyalty. I want to know why these wise guys are loyal to each other and not to me. So, let's put them to the test. Like how? Like having them kill each other. Out of respect for your Uncle Mike, the man who made me what I am today, I decided I'm not going to kill you. You see, before Mike Valentini retired and became the recluse that he is today. He taught me something, Harry. He taught me that what really matters is loyalty, trust, and the code. And that muscle crease betrayed you, Harry. You're a stand-up guy. You were ready to take the heat. I respect that. So I'm gonna give you one last chance, Harry. To save your wife and beautiful son. How would I do that, Mr. Costello? By cleaning the slate, Harry. By showing me that you understand what real loyalty means. Give him a piece. A piece? A piece of what? Oh, that kind of piece. Take it. And kill Dickstein. I can never 
would do that. He got no choice. scared in my life, though. We'd have been dead if it wasn't for my Uncle Mike. Yeah. Uncle Mike. They backed off because of Uncle Mike. That's what they told me. That's what they told you? I want you to know I went the whole nine yards for you tonight. I took full responsibility. You took full responsibility? Absolutely. I'd never do anything to hurt you, Mom. <laughs> I'd never do anything to hurt you, Harry. I mean, after all, you're my best friend on Earth, you know. And you're mine. So I guess our troubles are over, right? Water under the bridge. Glad we got that behind us. Who do you think is gonna get it first, Valentini or Dickstein? Dickstein's dead meat. Yeah, I bet Valentini gets it first. Louie, who you got? What's the line? Even money. Dickstein, 200, and take it off to the five by eight. Yeah, it's up to six already. Frankie, who you got? Put me down for five grand. Five? On who? Yeah, on me, because no matter which contract is executed first, I win, because the other one's mine. You got it. Hey, Marco, what are you waiting for, a bus or what? Huh? Not, uh, not, no, I didn't do that. You better watch him and make sure he doesn't tip Harry or Mo Wolf. Mr. Costello must have gained respect for us last night. He's letting us buy his tropical fish for him today. We got uh, two angelfish, four guppies, and a baby moray eel, huh? He treats his fish better than he treats us. Yeah. Let's go. Mo! What? I was thinking about last night. I was thinking how wonderful it is when two friends could just open up and level with each other. It's the best. I was thinking the same thing. Do you have life insurance? I mean, because if anything ever happened, you God forbid, I would rest easier knowing that Lil was being taken care of. Ow! What? Ow! What's the matter, Ow. Harry? What's Ow. I got something in my shoe. I have a wonderful what policy, policy, Harry. How about you? You got life insurance? Yeah, I got it. That's good to know. Tie my shoe. It's tied. Come on, let's go. Scenic route. Mo! 
Mo, there's some things I gotta grow off my chest. Well, here? You know I love you, Mo. I, I know, Harry. I love you more than I love my own brother. You don't have a brother, Harry. Oh, we really fucked up yesterday. But we really did. I just want you to know how bad I feel about well, it. Well, I want you to know why there's still time that I forgive you for all the trouble you ever got me into. I love you, Mo. Oh, I love you too, Harry. Life is so short. Prophetic, Mo. Very prophetic. This is all my fault, Mo. That's what I keep thinking. <clears throat> What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, it is your fault if you sort of think about it. Well, you were in on it every step of the way. That's crazy. I get the break and talk me into the whole you thing. You were right there with us when we fucking well, made the bed. Mom! Shut up! Come on, come on in. Come on, we gotta talk now. What are you standing there for? I said I gotta talk to you. Not here. We'll go around the corner to save Lucy's. Come on. Come on! We got no time to waste on you. Go ahead, Mo. You guys Come stop on. fooling around and get over here. Come on! Shit, Santa was right. Marco's gonna tip him off. I do. I like candles. What the hell did you guys do yesterday? What time yesterday? Give me that shit! Keep lighting the candles. I heard everything that happened. You guys went and screwed Costello with the track, didn't you? I heard you're dead. What do you mean, dead? What do you think I mean, dead? Dead means dead. You're both dead. <laughs> There's a contract out on both your lives! You better get out of town fast. Why am I telling you this? What am I doing outside? I can get killed for telling you this. What am I, crazy? Come here. Come here. Come on. Okay. Cut it out. Nice shot, Frank. You just got the Virgin Mary. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. Just stop making noise. Just do like I do, for Christ's sakes. Sorry. Excuse me, God. I'm sorry. You couldn't fuck with a normal person. You had to go and fuck with a loony tune like Costello. Whose favorite pastime is going to ball games and chopping people up into little pieces. Oh, my God. Oh, go ahead, Will you stop and just do like I do? <gasps> He doesn't want us to do that, does he, Harry? He's dead, Mo. What? He's dead. Dead. Are you sure? He's got a bullet hole in his back. He ain't gonna go dancing. Oh, my God. Where'd it come from? The balcony. Christ almighty, let's get out of here. Hey, you guys. Stop right there. Left that car. If we take it, it'll kill us. And if we don't. My car, my car! That's my car, you see that ass on? Well, I just took it, okay? I'm killing motherfuckers. It's not they're really dead. Marco's dead, I can't believe it. I gotta think. I gotta think. Who do you think they hired to kill me? I don't know. Who do you think they hired to kill me? 
I don't know. You can't be anybody we know. Well, whoever it is, we're dead men. We gotta get the hell out of Newark. Yeah, but where? Atlantic City! Broski, my Uncle Mike, he'll square everything. He can talk to Costello, I know it. Yeah, but I, I thought your Uncle Mike would understand you. I don't know. He kidding me? He loves me. I'm like the son he never had. I'm his favorite nephew. Him and Aunt Sadie have been begging me and Wanda to move closer to them to get... Wanda! Mom! Harry Jr. Oh, yeah. Phone booth! Phone booth! Pull over! Pull over! Brilliant! Brilliant! You kill my best waiter, and you let him get away. All bets are off. Find them and kill him. Now get out of here. Wanda, Ma, listen, Mo, remember that money we were saving for a rainy Guess day? Pull out the pouring buckets. Yeah, listen, get me? Harry Jr., grab a you cab, get the hell to the airport, right now, yeah, buy two tickets for Jamaica. Right. Deal. Uh, all right, all right, I'm in a little trouble, but Uncle Mike is going to get me out of it. What, what do you mean, uh, Uncle Mike loves me? Wanda, li just listen to me, for Christ's sake. Trouble, please, all right. Big trouble, please. Yeah, don't I, you get the hell out of Newark. Now just get to the airport as fast as you can. I love you, too. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Yes, I love you too. Okay. All right, Wanda. Goodbye. Maro Nami, she just goes on and on and on. Harry. Harry. Uncle, Uncle Mike. Mike. Right now. <laughs> Is it ringing? Yeah. Uh, Three, one more. Hi. Aunt Sadie, it's Harry Valentini, your nephew from Newark. Guess what? We're coming to Atlantic City. I'd like to speak with him, please. <laughs> oh, she's, a, yeah, she's getting Uncle Mike. What a card! <laughs> Uncle Mike! Hi! Uh, one, listen, Uncle Mike, I'm coming down to Atlantic City. Me and Mo Dickstein. What? He said to say hello. Let me say hi. No, 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 no. Uncle Mike, yeah, oh, no. All right. Yeah. No, I understand, Uncle Mike. All right, well, sure. No, everybody's fine. I'll be down in a little while to talk to you. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Uncle Mike sounds great. He sounds wonderful. Never better. He, he can't wait to see us. Wait, wait, and he remembered me? Fondly, he referred to you as the cute little Jewish kid with the sandy hair and the hazel eyes. Yeah, you <laughs> really said that? His exact words, I Mo. almost thought the guy couldn't I swear to God. No, Woody, our troubles are over. <laughs> Sal, let's get out of here. <laughs> remember me? Yeah. Mo? <laughs> Take me to Atlantic City, my man. <laughs> Harry, don't you think we look a little conspicuous in this thing? What do you got in mind? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah! 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 <laughs> Likes pink. Ah, I love it. Each side got up a great warranty. His mate job's guaranteed up to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Boy, the fixer really loves this car, Mo. Well, why should he, Harry? I mean, after all, it's a classic. Soon to be a tragedy. <laughs> Hey, 
What are we doing here? Ah, well, we can't go see Uncle Mike looking like this. We gotta clean up a little bit. Show some respectability. Don't touch the car. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. Be careful with the car, pal. It's a classic, huh? Carl, this gentleman and I would like the biggest and best suite you have. That would be the superstar suite. The superstar suite. Splendid. Fit for two kings. Or two queens. Front desk. How would you like to pay for this? Yes, that's right. Quickly. Take it out of there. That's Fine, a gold car. Yes, I believe I've seen them before. Thank you, Mr. Akavano. Resorts International. Where'd you get that? Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Akavano. <laughs> That'll be 1100 the night. <clears throat> Eleven hundred tonight. <laughs> Front. Luggage, sir. Yes, we'll be buying some. Thank you, young man. And while we're at it, some clothes and jewelry. It's a mere bag of shells. Thank you. Take us to your haberdashery. Thank you, Mr. Akavano. Oh, my pleasure, Mr. Dickstein. Mr. Costello, the Red Atlantic City. Fine Frankie, the Red Atlantic City. This your card, sir? Mm -hmm. The credit bureau has instructed me to destroy this card. It's overextended. <laughs> no! Now I'm gonna destroy you! Junior the nutcracker! <laughs> Frank, take it easy! You're in Atlantic City. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Uh, can you do the champagne over there? Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Is that the door? Is that the door? What? I'll get it. It's the champagne I ordered. Thank you, honey. <laughs> More champagne? Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Roccavano. <laughs> and some fish eggs. <laughs> Woo! Keep them hot, honey. I'll be right back. <laughs> At last, the champagne. My tongue was hanging out. Bobby D! Hey, Mo! Look who's here, Bobby D'Elia! Ah! Hey, Bobby, how are you, man? I can't believe you! Oh, yes. <laughs> Still the just like grade school. Over there's Harry, there's Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Vice versa. Hey, me! Oh, oh, me. Oh, oh, no, me. Oh, no, me. Oh, we're going to stay here all day. Oh, come on in. <laughs> oh, you guys are doing great. <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. Oh. Hi, Mo. Hi, Harry. Hi, Harry. Hi, Hi guys. Bye, girls. Bye. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> well, what are you doing here? This is my place. Wait, wait, wait. You own this hotel? It's a piece, a very nice piece. I thought you were in Vegas. I am, and now I'm here too. This is where the action is. So I'll be spending most of my time here from now on. So, where's uh, Frank the Fixer? Uh. He didn't come with us. We did him a big favor, Bobby. He gave us his credit cards. He told us to come down here and go wild. He's a new man, Bobby. You wouldn't <laughs> know him. He dropped somewhere. He looks great. <laughs> Harry, are we talking about the same Frank Acavano I know? Well, I want to know what the hell's going on here, Harry. All right. But first, we got some very important family business to take care of. Can I see you as soon as we get back to the hotel? 
minute you get back. He really said that? He said, just show up at the front door and I'll give you money? Well, in a matter of speaking. I mean, I don't want to just show up at the front door, take the money, and run. That wouldn't be polite. Like death. We knew it was only a matter of time until you arrived. That's a curious hello. Oh, Aunt Sadie, you're looking wonderful. This is for you. You remember Mo Dickstein from the neighborhood, don't you? Hmm. Harry and Mo, the Crystal Street bookends. Who could forget? Do you mind if we come in? Yeah. But you are family. Harry, she doesn't seem all that thrilled oh, to see us. Don't worry about it. She's a great kid. She loves to bust chops. Come on. Aunt Sadie, Mo and I shopped everywhere for the perfect gift for you. Well, courtesy of Resort International Inc. A bat in a thousand. Grandma! <laughs> Woo! Wait, wait, wait. Excuse me, but, uh... Do I know you? <laughs> of course you know me. Yeah. I'm Harry Valentini, your grandson from Newark. My grandson from Newark. But you never call me up, I say never. Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Does my nose deceive me? Can you believe it? I smell the greatest meat sauce I smell. Uh, huh? <laughs> smell yeah, I smell the greatest. You want to stay for dinner? Are yeah? you kidding? <laughs> hey. Him at all? Sure, he could stay, too. I'll help set the table. You see, that's the gentleman. Yeah, you're right. Most of the gentleman. i show you the dish, eh? Boy, yeah, it's... Tell, tell me how I'm hungry. Boy, I'm, I'm really hungry. hungry. I'm starving. I can eat a horse. <laughs> Uncle Mikey? Beautiful Harry sunset. And I had the most wonderful trip. Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. It looked like Oz on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that poetic? Grandma, can I speak to you for a second out here? Is Uncle Mike here? Oh, thank God. Where is he? He's uh, upstairs. Do, do you think he'd mind if I went up to see him before dinner? No, you like it. Either. You sure? Wait, I'll, I'll take this. this. Oh, hold on. I'm going up to see Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike? Uncle Mike? Uncle Mikey! The raviolis are getting cold. Uncle Mike? So you came down all the way from Newark just to see Uncle Mike, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so sweet. sweet. Do you think that Uncle Mike would mind if I went up there? No. Oh. Well, maybe the two of them want to be alone. It is a sensitive moment. Nah. They wouldn't mind. You go. Oh, great, thanks. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, sure, is that? Up the stairs. Up the stairs. Sit back. Trouble, Mo. What, Uncle Mike? You got it. Well, Will, is he gonna help us? I don't believe he's in a position to. Harry, you told me he promised. That I didn't. Oh, can I see him for myself? Yeah. He's on the mantel in the bedroom. I swear, there's a valid explanation. 
explanation for my behavior. You lied to me. You just outright lied, lied to me. I had hey. to, Mo. I had to. I was buying time until we got here. I figured once we got here, there was no way that Uncle Mike could refuse me. He found a way, Harry. He dropped dead. Yeah. He never could have stand you anyhow. You just got out of this. You're a low down, low life, rotten things you've ever done to me, Harry. And the list goes on Mo, and on. This Mo, is by far the all time worst. Mo, it may appear that way, Bo, but you just listen to me. I'm through listening up, to you. I was you lying to me. No, Mo, Everything you say is bullshit. No, it's just Mo. bullshit. No, no. Mo, no. I could just kill you. Hey, best idea you ever had. Shut up. You say go in the house. I was desperate, Mo. Not as desperate as you're gonna be. Mo! Adi, Adi, wait. Wait, Anna, wait. Come inside, Adi. Anna, check it out. Adi, come inside. Aspen. Aspen. Mo! Mo! Whose fucking car is that? Frank, it's your car. My car? I'll kill him! I'll fucking kill him! Are you a guest of the hotel? I'm a guest of your ass! <laughs> I'm uh, looking for two very good friends of mine, Harry Valentini and Mo Dickstein. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. There's no one here with those names. I know they're here! Give me a fucking room! Give me a suite! The best of the house! That would be the Superstar Suite. That's right, the Superstar Suite! Oh, Mr. Akavano. You're already in the Superstar Suite. Hey, Frank, take it, Frank, Frank, take it. Frank, take it easy. Still got a temper, huh, Fixer? Santo, John. Delia, long time no see. Not long enough. Now, if you gentlemen don't mind, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I'm looking for Valentini and Dickstein. Really? Why? Why? Because you got Mr. Costello for 250 billions. That's why. <laughs> oh, pardon me, Jim. I don't mean to laugh, but the thought of Lou Harry and Mo doing that to Tony Costello? By the way, how is Mr. Costello? Angry! Frank, take it easy. Fucking angry! Take it easy. Yeah. Fix it. This isn't Newark. Watch your mouth. Come on, take it easy. Look, why don't we all settle down? Let's have a drink. I'd like to hear what happened with uh, Harry and Moe and Mr. Costello. Carl, would you please put Mr. Acavano, Mr. Ravello, and Mr. Siclione at the motel across the street and charge it to me? But how? How could you be so stupid? Two hundred fifty thousand oh, dollars. Madonna mia, Madonna mia. Oh. Your father, just before they blew up his car, he come to me. He says, Mama, Mama, keep your eye on her. Sometime he has a feet that's too big for his shoes. Grandma, Uncle Mike was my last hope. Why didn't anybody tell me that he was dead? Because of Mikey. He wants it like that. Privato. Wow, well, what is that? Why, what do you mean? I'm family. Private. So you could call me for crying out loud. <sighs> Maybe he could still help you. I wasn't going to give you this because you'll never call me up, Harry. Yeah, Uncle Mikey, he left this for you. Come on. Come on. Okay.
cake? Uncle Mike left me a cake? It's a money. I'd open it all. Come on. Money? Uncle Mike left me money. How much is here, Grandma? Uncle Mike, he left with you twelve thousand dollars. Explain everything, Bob. And why didn't you when I first asked you? <clears throat> Sit down. Hurry, we go back so many years. I didn't want to involve you. Well, I'm involved. Frank, the fix is here. The fix is here? Yeah. Is Mo okay? Settle down. Everything's taken care of. For the time being. Harry, where do you come off messing around with a snake like Castello? Big mistake. I know it. Big fucking mistake. I admit it. But I got his $250,000 right here in his box. You really believe that's going to get you out of this? Yeah, with your help. Costello will listen to you. Maybe I can help. Hey, watch out, will you? Why the hell do I always have to do this? You know damn what I can't do it myself? Does Mrs. Fixer do it for you at home, Frankie? None of your business! Why don't we just go over there and waste them? We're not supposed to do nothing until Mr. Costello says so. This is the strangest pull case I've ever seen. It's my underwear, asshole! All right, go upstairs and get more ready. Hmm. You've been a bad boy, Harry. But don't worry, I'll square everything. You're saving my life, Bob. Forget about it. Now get going and get more. Tell them there'll be a limousine outside. Yeah. Take you both home. Right. All right? right. Okay. okay. Why'd you kiss me? I like you. Oh. Just gotta kill him. Just. Hello, Mr. Costello. This is Bobby DeLee in Atlantic City. Remember me from the neighborhood? Now, I just dropped the phone. Look, we have a bad situation here. I don't want any trouble in my hotel. This is what I think we should do. Who is it? It's Harry, Mo. Can I come in? Hey, 
love you, Mo. You know that. We're out of the woods. I'm telling you, we're out of the woods. <laughs> I can't believe how things keep going our way. I'm sorry, Harry. I really am. I understand. No, you don't understand. I'm the guy they hired to kill you. I'm the guy you've been running from. I had no choice. They threatened Lil. I had to say yes. And I gotta pull the trigger now, Harry. There's no other way out. You're the guy they hired to kill me? I'm the guy they hired to kill you! <laughs> you ever seen me with one of these before? You believe that son of a bitch, Costello, pitting the two of us against each other? That bastard, Pugh. I could have never done it, Mo. I swear to God on my father's oh, no. grave. I swear to God on my mother's oh, eyes. Not again. You're not God is my judge. Again. I would have never done it. Oh, no, Harry. Mo, put the gun not down. Again. I have to. No. It's my only way no, out. No, Mo, we're out of this mess. Once again, Harry Valentini with his back against the wall has come through. I got $250,000 in this cake box. And Bobby D's calling Costello to square everything. I put swear, the gun Harry, down. I can't take any more lies. Mo, Mo, look. Feast your eyes on that. Huh? Look at that. She got all, huh? 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 You want to get that, Mo? That's Costello calling to say everything's okay. Go ahead, pick it up. Go on. Hello? Mr. Costello? Ah. Yes, it's Mo Dixney, sir. Harry's right here. You spoke with Bobby D'Elia? We do, we have the money. I'm looking at it right now, Mr. Costello. Yes, you just tell us what you want us to do. Absolutely, You're a sir. wonderful, forgiving human yes, being, Mr. Costello. Yes, sir. God bless you and your yes. entire family. And we'll family. see you later tonight, God sir. bless you oh, Mr. Costello, and your thank entire you very much. family. Thank you. Thank God you, Mr. bless Costello. you. I can't believe it. You were right. It was Costello on the phone. All right, we're almost out of this. I don't want no accidents. Let us prepare for our limousine ride back to Newark. <laughs> Harry and Mo think they're going back to Newark to pay back your boss. But they're not going anywhere. They'll just get into a limousine out front, but they'll never get to Newark. Why is that? Because you'll be driving. Take them wherever the fuck you want. Do it. The end. That's where nobody gets shot in the head in my place and everybody's happy. There'll be 250 grand on Valentini's body. I trust you'll bring my money back. Don't worry, Delia, you'll get your money. Feels like this whole thing was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> I guess after all is said and done, we're a couple of lucky guys. I guess so. Woo! Who sizzling? <sighs> God damn, I feel lucky. Woo! Black. What do you black? I still got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Hey. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did that happen? I mean, did that happen? I mean, 28 black. I mean, that's like 35 to 1 odds. Yeah. Mo, I'm Mr. Lucky. I'm sizzling. I can't fucking wait. Can't wait. I, I, I mean, I'm like Mr. Lucky. Harry. I'm Mr. Lucky. I'm, I'm not so, gonna miss the limo. I'm like, yeah, you don't miss the limo. It's not like a bus. Oh. Oh, limo. Hold it. Oh, Mo, oh, we gotta have a drink before we blow this joint. Harry, come on. One drink, a drink to celebrate. Come on, right? Drive up, we'll be back in a minute. Bitch. One drink, Mo. To celebrate. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Music, I hear music. Broads. There's broads in here. Two champagne cocktails, please. Oh. Damn, like, look at they glisten. Look at them. Oh my god. <laughs> they're, they're wet. <laughs>
right here. Come on, please. Ugh. Mo, Mo, will you look at that? Huh? Alabaster. Mo, it would have been wrong not to have a drink after all we've been through. That's right. When you're right, you're right. right. I'm not arguing. Right. Right. Okay. To you, Mo, my absolute best friend in all the world. And to my best friend, Harry Valentine. To fate. To destiny. But most of all, to luck. Okay, done. Now, Harry, oh. let's hit the road, huh? Oh, no. Oh, don't do that. Oh, my God. Well, well Harry, oh. Mr. Costello's waiting. We're going to keep him waiting. I mean, he was nice enough to call me personally up in that hotel room, so I thought maybe we should get going. The limo is waiting. The limo's waiting. Mr. Costello called me personally, and I think we should get Mosey and Juan. The last thing we're going to do is get Mr. Costello mad again. Ooh. We got the whole thing Ooh. in the bag, Ooh. all right? Destiny. We don't want to keep Mr. Costello mm, waiting. Don't worry. If you want another peek at the money? Yeah, Harry, we really should get going, all right? Mo, mm -hmm. you know what? I think I'm going to mosey through the casino. Uh, that's very funny, Harry. You're kidding, right? No, Mo, can't you see it? This whole thing was meant to be. You think it's an accident that we wound up in the same hotel that Bobby DeLee owns, for Christ's sake? I'm telling you, Mo, our luck has turned. It's part of the grand design. No, not again! Harry! 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 Wait! Wait! I don't believe you! We're home free, and this is where you pull! No! We can give this 250 grand to Costello. It can still cut our balls off. I'll work this money into a million. We'll get Wanda, Lil, Harry Jr. We'll clear out of here. Move to Europe. Mo, these cocksuckers killed Marco. They shot him in cold blood. You want to give my inheritance to those bastards? You think I don't see you, huh? You think I don't see you over there, Sando? Why don't you shoot me, huh? Joey, you big fucking nobody's from don't nowhere. Don't listen to him, guys. He doesn't know what he's enough. saying. Don't... He doesn't know what he's saying. We got the money to pay Costello back. We really do, I swear oh, to God. Come on, huh? You say shit. I'm better than you. Do it. Why don't you pull the trigger? There's only 6,000 people watching. Go ahead, shoot me in the back. He doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't know what he's saying. Go on, you say shit. Speaking of shit, where's that fat hippopotamus fast stop and make him hang around? Just calm down, I'll eat the board. Get out of here, come on. Hit the target. Shoot me. Come on, shoot me. Come on, game I love to go and clean you and get you prick. Pull the trigger. You got out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I'm working this move. Harry! $5,000 in chips, please. This is my table. You heard it here. I am sizzling. Hurry! Stop! Stop! That's it, sweetheart. Count those babies. What are you, big dollars? Go to the slots for crying out loud. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Very much. We make some bets now. Let's make some manly bets. Two more over there. Let's go, sweetheart. Roll that baby. He did it right there! 
Harry! Oh my god, get a doctor! Get a hearse. It's dead fucking poo! What the hell did you do? I didn't do nothing, Dick Steen shot him! One down, one to go. Let him get home, get comfortable, and then. I can't wait. I can't wait. There's anything I can do. Haven't you done enough already? I found good. You did what you had to do. You're alive! 
I could kill you. What the hell are you doing to me? I almost killed myself up there. I beat him, Mo. Me. You beat him. I beat him. Oh, my God, you beat him. You said you were going to beat him, and you did. Yeah. For once in your life, you really pulled it off. You fooled me. I didn't know what was going on. You fooled me. I had me. to, Mo. Everybody had to think I was dead, especially you. Come on, get up. I knew Costello would never go for the money. He wanted our asses, too. Bobby D set him up good. Wait a minute, Bobby D was in on the whole thing? I couldn't have done it without him. The blood bags, the blanks, that phony doctor, the whole setup at the casino. Oh my God, who'd they just bury? An empty coffin. Who oh, got smoke? I can't believe it. Yeah. It was a wonderful funeral. Was Harry, it? it really was. It? was. Yeah. Well, how did Harry Jr. do? What a performance. Very touching, too. He threw himself right on the coffin. I, I told him not to do that. Hey, you would have done it. Probably. <laughs> now for phase two. We got to arrange your death before Costello does. What do you got in mind? A nice, noisy suicide. Mo, you're gonna turn the gas up real high. Let the house fill up with fumes. Light a match. Ba-boom! All they're gonna find is your bones. The ones I got in the bag over here. yah -ha! He was a 40 regular, just like you. Harry, Mo. this is brilliant. This is absolutely it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. For once in your life, you didn't screw up. I mean, this time you got it all figured. You're the best. Listen to this, Harry, what do you think? Dear Mr. Costello, I am taking my own life after taking the life of my best friend, Harry Valentini. Great. My last moments on Earth are not filled with sadness, but with joy. They are joyful because I took a miserable, no good putz like you for $250,000. My only regret is that I cannot send Joey Cicillone, Frank the Fixer, Louis Fontucci, and Santa Ravallo to hell where they belong. Fuck you now and in the hereafter. Fondly, Morris L. Dixie. Now that is poetry. In the kitchen. He's not here. Upstairs is clean. Who fought it? Piece of cake. How about you, Harry? Ah, Mo, the thrill's worn off. I've been dead for three days already. <laughs> Let's get out of here. You know, Harry, there's only one thing missing. What's that, buddy? Wish we hadn't left that 250 grand in Atlantic City. We didn't. You got it? Well, I don't exactly got it, Mo. I made a little investment. Oh, Harry! Oh, you trust me, Mo. It's part of the grand design. <laughs> well, Mo, did we do it or did we do it? We did it, buddy. <laughs> How about a Kanish? I'm in the mood for a cannoli. <laughs>
watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create 